So today on Storytime, we're going to talk about the origin of the Scrum Doc, which eventually became the Ecosystem ROAS Doc, which is the blueprint for what a lot of agencies use for their reporting on MER, whether they actually know it or not. So the Scrum Doc. Let's get down to the bottom of it. Now, I didn't make this. Now, what I did do was take something that it previously existed and I changed it a lot. So let's get to where it began. Now, almost half a decade ago these days, Jesus, um, I was working as a senior ad ops at a, an ad agency. Now, this is after I had left Omnicom and had done a little bit of client side, but this is a Facebook marketing partner. And it was really awesome to be one of Facebook's preferred solutions for, for brands. And, you know, it was a really great place. I was working with Disney and I got to bring TRX to market and um, a few other brands. And it was a lot of fun. Um, Joybird, and Progressive Insurance, and a bunch of other things. Um, not bringing Progressive into market, but TRX, yeah, that was fun. Got to be at the launch of that brand. Um, as well as, you know, a lot of other fun things. My point is, at, there was a period of time we had every morning at 10 o'clock, we had what we called the scrum meeting, right? Every person had to come in ready to go and you had to present your numbers. Now, that might or may not seem like a lot. And, and to be fair, what they were asking for was really just a quick, simple Excel doc to really get all of your accounts together. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of work until you understand that, first off, this is Los Angeles with LA traffic. And uh, I had like an over an hour long commute, but also that at the same time I was running Pizza Hut and Papa John's, Jack in the Box, Disney Movie Club, Progressive Insurance, uh, was aiding on New Balance, assisting with Joy uh, Bird, and then also uh, you know working uh, TRX. And that was a regular workload, was five to eight clients on Facebook, Google, Twitter, a little bit of Snapchat, some YouTube, not for every client, but basically there was about 20 some odd things that you had to bring to the table by 10 a.m. And, and so what originally this doc was, it was actually built out by a guy that ended up being uh, working for another business. I won't out him, but it's funny. We actually met on a plane once uh, going to Menlo Park to meet in the disruptor group. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing this, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, holy shit, I... You took my job at that agency. Like, I left that agency to take this gig, and they hired you to replace me. And that doc that you're working on is actually the thing that I built. And it was beautiful. But he had a little bit of an issue in how he was tracking it. So the scrum doc at the time was basically you updated your numbers month to date. And you organized it by campaign or business objective, whatever it happened to be. And it was very much just line by line item by line item. So this business prospecting, this business retargeting, this business Facebook, this business Twitter. And it was like maybe 20, 30 lines you had to update. Which means you had about a minute and a half a piece, which is fine because you just hit refresh, copy, paste, boom, 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 boom. But you had to have it ready by 10 a.m. because that was scrum meeting. So we called it the scrum doc because basically we pulled it up. We looked at everything that needed to be done and you very quickly had an idea of what are the three to five moves you can make today because you don't have time to do anything more than that. Per ad account, you have to strategize. Now, I took that doc with me when I went to another brand that at the time we started was in the $8,000, five to $8,000 a day range. And when I left was doing 35, some days we did a hundred grand in spend. It was insane. Um, but what we found was that that wasn't enough information. It wasn't really actionable. And this was right the time before we got into the account simplification, right? This is the end of 2016, beginning 2017 era, right? So, you know, we're spending that much money and account simplification really wasn't a thing yet. The power five hadn't been invented. Like we hadn't done those case studies yet, right? So you know, there's a lot of these disruptor brands that are still trying to figure out exactly how to use this new thing of the optimized CPM environment. Because remember, that was only a year or two old at that point. I think it was like nine months old at that point. So what we ended up doing was instead of having being horizontal, I flipped it around. I made it vertical. And instead of on the right hand side being a million different brands and having a 50,000 foot view, I made it day over day so that I could see day over day, week over week, month over month, what was happening. Now, in addition to that, 
what I started to do around the top was not just business objective, but also every single one of them. So I itemized them out. So it was Facebook prospecting for this thing, which might've been interest groups or lookalikes or creative testing or strategic testing, retargeting, retention, where is he in the funnel? So I could ultimately see all those parts. And so each individual business objective was itemized out. And next to that, there was a totals column that showed Shopify as well as the store, as, as well as the, you know, the business total. And we then got to the point where we're like, okay, well, let's just show, we'll have that all broken down, but we're just going to have a title page. So that title page was Shopify, Facebook, and then next to Facebook was prospecting, retargeting, and retention, right? So through the funnel. So you could start to see that broken down. Now, what had happened was um, I was hired as the second Facebook guy at this spot. And uh, within a month, uh, the other guy left and it was just me, um, which the CEO uh, the CEO loved because because I was an entrepreneurial guy that was defining best practices and the other guy was lazy as fuck. Um, so my point is, this is where we moved their attribution model from a 28 day click to a one because then we could ultimately start to measure all of the channels together. And that's where the Scrum Doc became an ecosystem ROAS doc. Because once we decided like, hey, look, knowing all these numbers that make Facebook looks great is, is fine. Like I feel good about myself, but that doesn't really mean anything. So then we started to take real action and we we're like, okay, well, let's measure everything against the same unit rate of measure. Let's actually make this data insightful. And remember, if anybody gives you data where the multi where different channels don't mean the same thing, then understand that what that means is that data is completely useless. Right. If Google's coming in at a 30 day and emails coming in at 28 and maybe Facebook's at a seven now, because that's as close to the truth as you can get. Uh, so basically nobody's talking the same language and your finance department doesn't care about a sale that happened last week or last month or last year. Let's say it's January 3rd and you're going to try to give credit to December 28th. Uncle Sam doesn't give a shit about your attribution model. They don't care. Your bank doesn't. Your finance department doesn't. Your fulfillment center doesn't. The paychecks went out. The credit card was, bill was paid. Like, the only person that feels good about that is the person that has to rely on falsifying their information in order to represent their value. And this was made only more and more apparent as we started to line up all the platforms against each other. So I started to say, well, what are all the platforms I'm advertising on? So there was a Facebook line item and then a Pinterest line item and then a Snapchat and a Google. There's an Amazon line item. And so every one of them had their own scrum doc. And then all those scrum docs rallied up into one overall sheet where we measured every single channel against the same unit rate so that we could actually see what any one of those channels actually did to the bottom line. Now, what we were able to do there is measure out the contribution by channel and incrementality to the business as usual. We could see like what happens if we push Facebook spend by 20% to the revenue that we get from branded search and how much of that actually lifts our overall business. Now, if you can't tell me that answer, then understand what you're telling me is you do not have the confidence enough in your measurement to truly push your business forward. What happens when you throw in influencer marketing? I had a six figure monthly budget for influencers where we had no attribution other than we pay them what happens. Uh, and the only way we were able to measure that is by again, throwing that as another channel inside of the sheet. And ultimately after pushing that for years inside of the disruptor group, the idea started to seed out and very much was built on core business practices, right? Like this is how businesses used to measure things before you had the idea of the pixel and around these very long attribution models and these very long windows that basically came up because of online advertising and allowing that online marketer because nobody could really believe that the online world was actually selling anything, how they could take as much credit as possible for everybody else's work so they could validate their existence. Now, while I'm glad that they did it because it means that we all have jobs, it's also predicated on the idea of I don't have confidence in my ability to be to contribute. So I'm going to take as much credit as possible for everything and give a very dishonest, low integrity data point to show you my value. 
So ultimately what happened from this was the idea of really taking an old school approach of print and television and radio and measuring that by market. It was no small coincidence that my boss at the time was a vice president at Guthrie Ranker and she was spending a hundred million dollars a year with an attribution model of five minutes after the show ended for infomercials. So if she's able to measure by time of day and market to understand where to spend a hundred million dollars a year, um, we can make things work whether or not the attribution model works. Because really, a lot of people have a false sense of how attribution ha is handled. Attribution is not a sale happened, who gets credit for it. That is the storyline of the marketer that does not care about the overall business. That's the storyline of the marketer that cares about taking as much credit as possible. And those are two very, very different things. Most ad agencies have a very myopic view of a business. And that's one reason you'll see me lay into a lot of these business owners that are agency owners, that don't do the actual work, that don't pull the buttons, that do a lot of sales but don't own their own businesses that rely on it. And there's a very, very different way of viewing data when you're on the client side and the integrity of the information is important versus being on the agency side where how the person feels about what you've told them is important. Very, very different things. And by the way, I learned that lesson in an excruciating way. Uh, and if you want to know the story about why I got fired from a job for doing a really good for the client, catch that there. So anyway, what this ultimately came down to is a marketing efficiency measurement. Now, towards the end of 2020, I kept preaching ecosystem ROAS, ecosystem ROAS. Now, mind you, I've been doing that since 2017. But I finally got on marketing Twitter and I started blasting that out. Now, in 2017, they called me a troll. In 2018, they called me a troll. In 2019, they called me a troll. And, you know, these were the, the Nick Shacklefords and Tim Birds and Cat Howells of the world. Uh, you know, either laughing me off, kicking me out of their Facebook groups, or basically ignoring what I had to say because it really hurt their business model of providing low value information as a low integrity salesperson to basically look good and take as much money as they possibly can. And hey, look, it worked for them. But once the iOS 14 stuff came out and people realized that their ability to misrepresent information was getting more and more hindered, you started to see this thing around MER come around, right? Now, mind you, this was something that we talked about for nearly five years, four years ahead of time. But it's a very, very old business practice. So, in short, I'm not saying that everybody's above board or that everybody's below. What I'm saying is knowing the value of your ecosystem ecosystem ROAS built on the back of the scrum doc that I stole from an ad agency like five, six years ago. Um, using that as the core of your information will allow you to apply business practices so that you can measure the success of your advertising in the same way that they did in the 1940s where there wasn't a fucking pixel. And businesses succeeded then. And the honest truth is, if you can get down to extreme data integrity, directional improvement, and truly caring about your customer, you're going to be able to measure things in what we now call MER, based on these old principles, on these simple docs, and it won't take you more than five or 10 minutes, maybe a bit more if it's too complicated, but I had less than an hour to do it for five or six brands across three or four different platforms. And that is all the time that you should be spending on tracking all of this stuff. And it really, really gets you down to what are the things that are really actually important for you to track? And I'll close with this. The things that those docs have taught us, as well as understanding principles that are not completely irrelevant on Facebook, CPC, click-through rate, cost per ad to cart. Sorry, Nate. Uh, Cost for anything that isn't the desired result. Those things don't mean anything. And you know that because when you look at a giant sheet and you have to start mapping things out at a 50,000 foot level, 
there is no room for the excuse of, well, we lowered our CPC by X amount. Like, I don't give a shit. I'm trying to build a business, not make you feel good. That's what the ecosystem ROAS doc will let you get to. Today, those kids, and I call them kids because they got into the business after I did, um, they call, they'll call it MER. And that really comes from a practice that runs on the concept that what they rely on to show their proof is completely irrelevant. That, I think, is one of the funniest things that I've seen in the industry in a long time. So anyway, I hope that was fun. Uh, this one was maybe a bit more shots fired than my usual story times. But, hey, look, you got to know where things come from and the value therein. So with that being said, if you like this, uh, subscribe. And if you want to watch more vids, that one, apparently YouTube says should be pretty good for you. See you next time.